It's evident that comparison is part of our human nature, and whilst it isn't all bad, there is no doubt in the fact that this process of evaluation in relevance to ourselves and others can often lead to unhappiness. This is considerably evident today, where we are always connected. Social media acts as a window into people's lives which are often more glorified than they are in reality. In addition to what we see online, there is this general perception of success. As a collective society, we drive the idea that more is better, resulting in what is commonly referred to as a rat race. We are forever searching for that external validation, focusing on what we don't have rather than what we do. It's an endless cycle of never enough. Okay, that intro was heavy. I got a bit carried away there. It wasn't necessarily in a line with the subject of today's video because here I'm going to talk about comparison within the context of art. I was prompted to make this video as a result of my own experience creating art and publishing it online. It doesn't just apply to artwork though. What I am discussing here rings true with every creative pursuit. With any activity that results in you creating something that didn't exist before you created it. It's an interesting yet often senseless scenario when an artist compares their artwork with another. It really depends on a lot of different factors for it to even be considered a sensible comparison. Were the artist's intentions the same? Did they both attempt to achieve the same result? Because you can't compare two artworks where the artist had two varying objectives. I guess I'm just trying to rule out the act of comparison of artwork in general because most of the time it's a pointless exercise, yet we still compare. It's important to understand your intentions with whatever you are creating before comparing it with another creation. A lot of the time, you will never know what the other artist was intending. You only get to see a fraction of the creative process, which is the end result, the artwork. You are entitled to your own opinion, which will likely differ from others, but that's acceptable because art is subjective. There are these general assumptions of what should be considered good and bad, but again, you cannot make an accurate judgement without knowing what the artist intended on doing. It's really an issue when there is a lack of context, where you see an artist's work without knowing their reasonings for it. It's a situation that is prevalent when artists post their work online, and when we see their artwork but nothing else. We know that there is this entire working process behind that, yet we only see the result, the cherry on top. I'm assuming that most of you watching are into drawing and making art yourself, and I'm also going to make another assumption and say that there has probably been a point in time where you have compared your artwork with another artist, and as a result, you might have felt dissatisfied with your work. Now, it isn't all negative, there is a healthier approach when it comes to comparing your work with others. Perhaps you are in the process of learning something specific and you are using another artist's artwork as a means of judging your success. Now, you have to be very aware of the fact that you are learning in order to avoid feeling doubtful about your work. Instead, you see it as a stepping stone. Each piece you create is a step in the right direction and this artist who you admire acts as an example, almost like a milestone for yourself. A lot of us are self-taught and so it's nice to have access to other artists' work which can encourage us to progress with our own and that's all it should do. It shouldn't make us doubt our progress and resent what we produce as well. Unfortunately, we do at times catch ourselves falling into that trap. I've gone through many phases where I feel displeased about my work and I go online, I see all of these other artists putting out amazing content, it doesn't make you feel too good. I mean it's not so much of an issue these days because I've grown to somewhat avoid falling into these pitfalls, which I'll get into soon, but when I was younger I would frequently compare my work with other artists and even myself sometimes because it's true it doesn't just start and end with the work, a lot of the time an artist puts their self-worth into what it is that they create and so if that isn't right then that can reflect on how we feel about ourselves. 
There is a phrase which comes to mind, don't compare your beginnings with someone else's middle. Something that I believe every artist should be aware of is their experience in what they are creating. Drawing is a craft which is developed over time. You can't just pick up a pencil and expect to draw to the same standard as an artist who has been working for their entire life. Instead, you should recognise where you are in your journey, take pride in small improvements, but don't overlook your limitations. If you see an artist's work that you admire and you are striving to get to that stage yourself, then rather than being frustrated, remind yourself that that artist had to start somewhere. If you was to go back in time, you'd see them in the same position as you, where they are learning and developing. Now there's always going to be exceptions, people have it easier than others, perhaps they were fortunate enough to go to a highly rated art school or they had a personal mentor. All of these factors come into play, but it shouldn't dissuade you from putting in the effort to teach yourself. In fact, you can take more pride in that when you are able to look back at your older work and see how far you've come. There are so many resources that artists can take advantage of and being self-taught is not uncommon at all. You don't have anyone holding your hand along the way but there's also some benefit to that because if you are teaching yourself you learn to be self-disciplined which is a trait that will improve many areas of your life. It's all about staying in your own lane and that is something that I often have to remind myself. It's easier now than it ever has been to see what everyone else is doing and if you see someone doing something that gets results, it's very tempting to try and follow in their footsteps and change what you were originally doing. In a situation like this, you have changed lanes and now you are going in a different direction. Now there are some exceptions, you know, change could be necessary and long overdue, you may also benefit from doing this, but more often than not, what you see is a lack of clarity. Where an individual has no specific intention and is frantically doing everything in different areas in hopes of seeing a result. I can talk from experience when it comes to this, when I was starting out on YouTube, it was hard for me to gauge what was the most effective content to create. There's so many examples of creators that are successful and all of this diverse content on the platform. I was questioning how I was going to approach everything. I knew that I would be making content surrounding art and drawing, but there was a lot to consider. I've experimented and had experience creating a wide array of content since I have been making videos here. It was hit or miss, I was figuring out what works whilst also discovering what I enjoy making the most. In terms of developing my artwork, that has been a more gradual process over time. There was never really a point where I was drastically switching things up and creating something that wasn't in a line with what I was likely known for. I don't have much of an incentive to alter my artwork in a way that is far from what I am used to creating, and some of you may assume that I am creating limitation by not allowing myself to explore and experiment with my work. This is really a discussion for another time, but it's also relative to the subject of this video because it ties in nicely with the negative connotations surrounding comparison. I believe that I am at a point with my artwork where I have nailed down an efficient process and style of drawing that garners a positive response from a wide audience. I have explored, experimented and experienced a great deal in my search for what I create now. I'm not saying that I am at the end of the road, of course not, there's a, a lot which lies ahead, but what I mean is that I have tried and tested many alternative means of creating in order to discover and develop a process that ticks all of the boxes and is in a line with my intentions. Throughout your development as an artist, which is an endless development, you will likely find yourself jumping from one thing to another, and at the start, when you are figuring out what works for you, that should be encouraged, but eventually you will come to a point where you are aware of what it is that you want to do, and from then on, you need to stay on course in order to progress more efficiently. You'll often be inspired by other artists' work, which may begin to influence your process and shape your artwork. It's common for beginners to learn from other artists along the way until they come into their own. When you are starting out, it's hard to find confidence in your own work and that is why we look towards other artists and see what they create. 
The act of comparison is ingrained into our nature and that's how we evaluate what is around us and we do that based on our own perception. In relevance to art, an artist should not be making their decisions based on anyone else's perception. It's a freeing subject that I personally believe shouldn't conform to any set rules or laws you must abide by. You are in control of the rules that apply and it depends on what you are doing. To give an example, I enjoy the process of rendering an image in detail. When I do this, and you've likely seen me do this a lot in many of my videos, I am image making. I am focusing on the specifics, observing a reference and recreating an image that viewers can relate to. Here there are some rules involved. I am rendering what I observe realistically and I am drawing what I see in the reference image. If I am drawing from my imagination then there can also be rules involved. If I am intending on creating the illusion of reality I need to consider the perspective and the properties of whatever it is that I am drawing. Alternatively I could be creating an abstract piece where there are still some set rules but they are a lot more flexible. It's the artist that makes the rules here and that's what's important. You make the rules in a line with your intention and then you create. Nobody else can effectively criticise the result without knowledge of those rules and intention. I guess what I'm saying is that when it comes to art, you do you. Don't be concerned with what everyone else is doing because they are on a different path. Comparing your work and progress with others is distracting and it will take your attention away from what you should be doing yourself. I know that I have a tendency to waffle on about all of these subjects that I discuss throughout these videos, but I hope that you can take something away from this. I talk about all of this from my own experience and I only share what I learn and so yeah, listen to this and have another perspective or a point of view on a subject, but I don't know everything of course, but if you did enjoy it then please leave a like subscribe with the notifications on to never miss a video in the future if you'd like to support the channel further then do consider checking out the patreon page where i create some exclusive content and with all that being said thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one